with snow on, so we were cleaning runways. And we were waiting to get clearance to get onto the runway and start cleaning. Yeah, somebody just uh, crashed on 3-5 left, big fireball. They just said, all oh, personnel, um, uh, a plane's off the runway. We need all hands at 3-5 um, left. Stapleton Airport maintenance workers like snowplow operator Michael Fowley were among the first first responders to one of Colorado's worst aviation disasters, the crash 35 years ago today of Continental Flight 1713. There was the debris field, there was the stuff strewn everywhere. We started helping some people that were it, strapped in their seat, they were alive. As he searched for other survivors, Fowley came upon an airport manager. And he said, there's a baby lying here. And he walked away. There was a sweater in the debris. I grabbed the sweater, I wrapped it around him, I picked him up. That moment seared him then. He was breathing, he, he wasn't crying, his eyes were closed. And it sears him even now. A fireman approached me and I told him I had a baby. And um, he, he started giving him CPR. And, and then he looked up and he said, Inside the airport, anxious passengers waited for news. Outside, there are many uh, injuries and there are fatalities. A police spokesman confirmed the awful reality. There are, there are people down there, a lot of people trying to help them right now. Along runway 35 left, rescues continued for hours and Fowley helped where he could. Right here. His back captured in a news photo of the last rescue of a survivor. I remember them trying to get this guy out. I didn't leave till they pulled him out. Finally, he went home. Yeah, I got into the shower. And that shower to the water turned cold. And that's actually, that's me at the airport. Fowley worked for the city for more than three after. decades, though he left the airport after the crash and spent much of his career in wastewater management. He still feels pain for the 28 people who died that day. But he feels something else too. I'm proud of everything I did. I'm proud of the guys that were with me. Proud that they helped some of the 54 survivors. You know, you never know what you can do until you have to do it. Yeah, it's something that I'll never forget. You know, it, it'll always be part of who I am, really. Federal investigators concluded that ice on the wings and too steep a climb caused the crash, issues that resulted in criticism, criticism of nearly everyone involved, from the pilots to the tower to the airline. Kim and Tom? It's an amazing story. I remember being in the newsroom as this played out, uh, the old building, but uh, you think of that baby 35 years now. It would be a 35-year-old person somewhere were it not for that crash. And you think of how uh, Michael still feels that. How been, he was thrust into a position he was not equipped to handle, and he handled it extremely well. Yeah, we get into this more on the story on the web, but they were trained, the maintenance crews were trained to, like, set up barricades and make sure traffic could get in and out when in, in an emergency. Nobody trained them to be the first people on the scene of a crash of a jetliner. So many people live with those scars and the wounds from that day. And then you often, we often forget about the importance of a great firefighting response effort, which is why they're there at every airport and they plan for things like this much better now. Absolutely. And, you know, clearly firefighters and, and paramedics and other rescuers from all over poured in. But in those initial minutes, it was the maintenance Seconds. crews that got there first because they were in their vehicles waiting to plow that runway when the crash happened and they shot right out there. Well, it changed the way first responders do respond at airports and the way that DIA would ultimately be built to handle a situation like that. Yeah, they're much better at everything now than they were 35 years ago. I mean, the communication that led up to this tragedy is much better today. Yeah. Well, it was a terrible day, but uh, the, the heroics of people like Michael Thaly. And I'm so glad you shared his story because otherwise most, most people would never hear it. It was interesting, really wonderful. Interesting guy, and like I said, it's he carries the pain of that day and he carries a lot of pride. And Yeah, you know, both. Yeah. Well, we appreciate him. And you. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you.